Hi everyone, so welcome to one more fantastic 5MC discussion. Let's start with the first one. Which of the following drug will not produce fixed dilated pupil? So they are not asking which is not a mid rating. Dilating a pupil is called midriasis. So cocaine can cause midriasis, but pilocarpine will cause meiosis. Phenylephrine can cause midriasis. Amphetamine can cause mitriasis. So the answer is B. Pilocarpin. So whenever they ask the question about pupil, please remember pupil can be a meiotic pupil or midriatic pupil. Now which drugs can cause meiotic pupil? It can be cholinergic drugs like pilocarpin or physostigmine. Second, meiotic can be caused by alpha blockers. Meiosis is also seen with opioids like morphine, like that. Now, coming to midriatic, midriatic can be seen with sympathetic drugs and anticholinergics. The sympathetic drugs example is phenylephrine, which we use in treatment. But the other sympathetic we don't use in treatment are cocaine, amphetamine, these poisonings we see dilated pupil. Now anticholinergics where you see dilated pupil is mainly atropine derivatives, atropine, homatropine, cyclopentalate, then tropicamide. So this is the pupil. So coming back to the question which will not cause midriasis is pilocarpin because it's a meiotic. So go through this again. What are meiotic drugs and what are midriatic drugs? Right. Moving on to the next question. If codeine is coming to the market in combination with dextromethorphan, as antitussive, this combination. Now, antitussives, this combination should not be used as it is irrational, can be used to treat pop effectively, should be used as it has different mechanisms of action, should not be used due to addiction. So try to answer this, pause the video. Now whenever there is cough, particularly dry cough, we want to suppress this. And they are called anti -tussius. So among anti we had opioid. And the opioid commonly used is codeine, full codeine like that. But the drawback of codeine is, it can cause constipation in patients. Patient may have addiction, abuse of this drug, and overdose can lead to respiratory depression. And this drug can be cause respiratory depression, so not used in children, not used in pediatric population. So we came with non-opioid, the NMDA blocker, and the name is called dextromethorphan. So that is also a drug which is used for dry cough. But all these problems are minimal, no or less with that. That is why most of the patients we start on dextromethorphan. Now the question is asking, can we combine codeine with dextromethorphan? No. Why did we come for dextromethorphan? To get the advantage. But if I add them together and give to the patient, then it is obviously irrational combination. So I don't want to give it. So this is the right one. Coming to other discussions, can be used to treat cough effectively? No. Right. Can be used, it has different mechanism of action? No. Even though they are different mechanism of action, but the adverse effect is not going to come down. Should not be used due to addiction. No. This is not going to cause addiction. This is going to cause addiction. So this combination should not be used because they are irrational combination. Now tell me, what are the mucolytics we use in dry, not dry cough, wet cough, product cough? So tell me what are the mucolytics used in wet cough when there is thick white sputum. So I will give A, B drugs. What are the A and B drugs used as mucolytics? And tell me a drug which is used as mucolytic ends with cysteine. 
in the comment section. Now coming to the third question, a patient with pelvic fracture and head trauma with CT suggestive of intracranial trauma was given morphine opioid for pain and respiratory difficulty followed. So patient had a pelvic fracture and head trauma and he had suggestive of intracranial tension and he was given morphine for pain but after that respiratory difficulty increased. What could be the cause? So the options are due to morphine addiction. There was there is no history of that so could not be due to pelvic fractures. Yeah, maybe pelvic fracture, there may be embolism and there can be problem. But this is not the point. The point is morphine should not be given in contraindicated in head injury patient. Why head injury patient it's contraindicated? There are three reasons. Number one, it causes respiratory depression. So it increases carbon dioxide retention in the brain. Now you know when there is carbon dioxide retention, it increases intracranial pressure further. And it will cause meiosis. And you cannot assess the head injury progression if already there is meiosis. Because of these three reasons, morphine should not be given in a patient with head injury. So here patient had come with head trauma and pelvic fracture was given morphine. So why it was a problem for the patient? Because morphine can cause respiratory depression and cause carbon dioxide retention which will increase the intracranial pressure further and worsen the problem. So CNS lesions, there is no history given in the question. So it is the drug which is responsible for that. So I will go with option C as the right answer for this. Coming to the next question, 15 year old female, complaints of cough and sore throat. She was prescribed an antibiotic, following which she came with this symptom. Which drug would have caused it? You can see, I think you can see the image, patient is having rashes, redness. So this is an allergic reaction. So if you don't treat it properly, it may go for anaphylaxis. So remember the options, fexofenadine, salbutamol, amoxicillin, corticosteroids. So what could have caused this? So it's an easy one to answer. They have already asked. Antibiotic is prescribed. So the answer will be C, amoxicillin. Amoxicillin belongs to penicillin group of antibiotics. It is a type of beta-lactam antibiotics. You know that penicillin is obtained from fungus. Penicillin mutatum. Some people are allergic to that fungus. So they can develop allergy and allergy can go for anaphylaxis. So that is why before giving penicillin, we need to give test dose. Even when we give test dose, it is negative and we start IV, there can be a chance of allergy, anaphylaxis, anaphylactic shock. Now tell me what the drug of choice for anaphylactic shock. So you have to tell me the drug, the dilution and the dose and the root and the muzzle which is used to give the injection. So I want all these details in the comment section. Now coming to fexofenadine. Fexofenadine is a second generation antihistamine. So it is used to treat allergies. So it itself will not cause allergy. So that is ruled out. Salbutamol belongs to Saba, short-acting beta agonist, and that is used in asthma. Even if there is allergy and then anaphylaxis, bronchoconstriction, we can use salbutamol also, adrenaline also, as nebulization. Corticosteroids are immunosuppressant, anti-inflammatory drugs, so they are not going to cause this problem. In fact, if there is allergy, we give antihistamine, we give steroid, and adrenaline in these patients. So, it's an easy question. The answer is amoxicillin, which is a penicillin group of drug. Coming to the last question, a psychotropic drug inhibiting reuptake of serotonin is likely to cause which of the following adverse effect? So, a psychotropic drug inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin, usually we call them as SSRI, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor. Example is fluoxet. So they are asking, likely to cause which of the following adverse effect? Visual disturbance, constipation, dry mouth, sexual dysfunction. Now fluoxetine increases serotonin level. So number one, it can cause 
nausea, vomiting, diarrhea because they stimulate serotonin in the uh, chemoreceptor trigger zone as well as in the intestine. Second, they can cause anxiety initially. So when we start this SSRI, they can cause anxiety initial days. Then they can cause insomnia. So lack of sleep, that's why they should be given in the morning hours. Number four, they can cause sexual dysfunction. And two problem is anorgasmia. So there is no orgasm properly. And the ejaculation is delayed. Delayed ejaculation. Sometimes this SSRIs can cause bruxism. With SSRIs, if you combine with another serotonergic drug, they can cause serotonin syndrome. And tell me what is the drug of choice for serotonin syndrome. So these are the problems. So coming back to the question, will they cause visual disturbance? No. Will they cause constipation or dry diarrhea? Will they cause dryness of mouth? No. Obviously they cause sexual dysfunction. So what you have to tell me, is tell me the SSRI approved for premature ejaculation. Tell me the SSRI approved to manage premature ejaculation. So with that we are done with the fantastic 5 MCQs. So any doubt you can ask me in the comment sections. And we'll take care. Thank you all.